everybody. <laughs> we back. Welcome to another episode. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Kirtan Way number four virtual cheese class. We have a very special cheese class tonight, and we're going to talk about Easy G 101. No, yeah. I'm just <laughs> Um, Why do we we're going to have tonight a wonderful pairing. We're going to have cheese, wine, and donuts. Carl's Donuts is uh, obviously in town forever. And uh, we paired up with them, and we came up with some incredible pairings on that. And But let's start with the panel. Obviously, beautiful Caroline. Hey, we have Jason over here, our wine sommelier. We have Amber and Carl's Donuts, and we have Brooke from Carl's Hello. Donuts. Brock. 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 I'm sorry. <laughs> so here we go. And then, of course, over here we have our cheese curtners. Hello. We have Marissa, Maritza, Hello. Janelle, and Jamie. That way. So yeah, right welcome here. to the class, and uh, let's get right started. I think uh, the first thing we should do is, Jason, why don't you talk about the wines? Cheers. Yeah, cheers, everybody. First. Cheers. Cheers, cheers, everybody. Cheers. 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 Rock, us. I'm so sorry. <laughs> so, um, so four cheese, four donuts, four wines. It's kind of a nightmare pairing, uh, in a sense, to get wines that you know are in a certain price range and do have some stylistic, stylistic characteristics that go along with everything. So everybody got uh, two wines: uh, the Borealis from Montenorio State in Willamette, as well as the Shannon Ridge in Lake County, California, and the. Premium package was the Calmere from Peju and the Velvet Fog. So just I'll briefly go over a little bit of all of them. And uh, as we taste and go through the donuts and go through the cheese, everybody can kind of chime in. Like I said, this is one of those pairings that, you know, you're never going to get a one specific wine to match everything. You're really going to have to pick out certain notes and go in, in a direction that you feel and what you taste in certain wines. So the Borealis, this is a uh, winemaker owner Rudy, second generation. They moved here from northern Italy, uh, Montemor State, like I said, in Willamette. It is a blend of four different varietals, Mula Thurgau, Riesling, Gervich Demeanor, and Pinot Gris. They're generally varietals that you're going to find uh, throughout Europe, especially in Germany, Sweden, uh, Alsace, and uh, northern Italy. And, you know, when you're looking for, you know, an extensive pairing and you're trying to get multiple different flavors, white blends really work fantastic with them. Um, as we go through, I'll kind of give a little synopsis on the varietals. Mueller Thurgau is, uh, was created in the late 1800s. Uh, Herman Mueller uh, started the varietal in the commune of Thurgau. And it's a, it's a, a blend of two different varietals, uh, Riesling uh, being one of those and Madeleine uh, Royale being the other. Your bitch demeanor is going to add a little bit more of the aromatics to the uh, blend, the Pinot Gris, a little more of the fruit, kind of like the peaches you're going to get with the Mueller. Um, and then Riesling is going to really be the backbone and give the wine the acidity. But, you know, they grow a cool climate in Europe, and they grow well in cool climate in Willamette. Uh, Shannon Ridge, another great winery in Lake County. If you ever get a chance, it's one of the most beautiful parts of wine country. It's just north of Napa Valley. It's high mountain. Uh, cool climate as well, which is where you'll see Petite Syrah grown uh, in the Rhone Valley as well in France. Uh, the actual name of this varietal is Durif, but uh, the Americans and Israelis call it Petite Syrah. And this is also a blend of two different varietals in northern uh, Rhone, but Syrah would be basically its dad, uh, and Pollution would be uh, cross pollinated two different varietals. And here's what you get a delicious. A lot of high mountain fruit. Think about huckleberries, boysenberries, mulberries, pretty much anything you find on high mountain cliffs. Uh, Calmere, this is created by Peju. Uh, the last two wines are, are iconic uh, Napa producers for big Cabernets. Peju and the Cabernet and the Velvet Fog. This is Yao Ming's wine, known for you know 95 plus point Cabernets as well. Uh, my thought is they probably tired of drinking Cabernet, so they had to go make something that was a little bit lighter and a little bit more refreshing. So they both now make a Chardonnay and a Pinot Noir. Calmere makes their Chardonnay and Pinot in Carneros, real cold climate, foggy most of the day, southern Napa Valley, and then Velvet Fog. This is Yao Ming's wine. Uh, Tom Hine is his winemaker. He's probably, you know, the most iconic winemaker, CEO, president you would find in all of California. He 
started Flowers, was the president and CEO for a long time, Hartford Court, McCrema, was in projects on La Coya, Cardinal, and so forth. And, you know, he started the Velvet Bob product uh, in Russian River, but he uses fruit from several different locations, Santa Barbara, Monterey County, and, and, uh, and Sonoma. So as we taste, we'll go through and sure. I don't know, if anybody has questions on any of the wines, please feel free to chime in. We'll, we'll detail it a little bit more. All right. Uh, Amber and Brock, why don't you guys go ahead and tell us about Carl's Donuts and uh, what you brought today. Okay, so little history on Carl's Donuts. We have been in Las Vegas since 1966. Um, our grandparents started it. Um, shortly after they started, they ended up separating and my Nana Lynn took it over. So everyone's always like, where's Carl? Where's Carl? It's not really, he's not the man. Nana is actually the boss lady. So. She's yeah. the man, yeah, girl power. <laughs> um, but now it's run by my mom, my dad, my uncle, and then it is me, my brother, my sister, and my cousin. So it's full on family run. A lot of family. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and you guys have how many of us? So we have our wholesale location, which uh, delivers throughout Las Vegas. We do um, hotels, hospitals, lots of convenience stores, 7-Eleven, Rebel, Green Valley Grocery, all those kinds of places. And then we have our retail store that we are just celebrating our two years that we uh, are reopened. So we are on Sunset and Pecos. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. So why don't you guys talk about the donuts that we have? Okay. You want to go for it? You want me to? Um, I'll go with the first one. Okay. The first one that we have is a sour cream old fashioned. It's a classic donut. Um, it's got a real good texture to it. When you take a bite, it's got a crunch. It's nice and moist inside. It is overall probably one of my favorite donuts. Next one. <laughs> we have a classic uh, pink sprinkled ring. So it's a yeast based donut with a, just a sweetened vanilla icing and some classic sprinkles. Next one is an apple fritter. Um, something that we do special is we use real apples chopped into all the apple fritters. Um, most other donut shops use a mix. Um, so we got real apples in there, real cinnamon, all around good donut. One of our, I would say it's our most popular. Yeah. For sure. And then we have a classic devil's food cake here. So just a chocolate cake donut, chocolate icing, really rich, super chocolatey. One of my favorites. <laughs> All right. Well, that uh, covers then the donuts. Thank you for coming and joining sure. us tonight. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> this is going to be a crazy class. Um, obviously, sweet wine and cheese. So what's better than that? Caroline, why don't you go ahead and start introducing the first cheese? Okay, so welcome everybody. So I just would like to say that uh, we decided to do a donuts and cheese class and wine class because we like to have fun. And, and this is an unconventional pairing, but we're just here to have fun. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> so. And so we're going to see if you like it, if you don't. So if you don't, just eat it separately, if it's, you like. It's really good. If you like it, call me. If you don't like it, call Carolyn. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I will take I will take the blame. <laughs> we just had to put a little bit more time to put these pairings together. They're, you know, uh, it's yeah. really fun. Yeah. So hey. we're going to have, so the first cheese with the first donuts so we decide uh to have the holy cow the holy cow it's from uh, california paso robles it's um uh, from a creamery uh the name is a central coast creamery it's a uh, whole milk uh, swiss type of cheese so you could see the little holes uh so central coast uh, uh they're doing they they making you know like a 10 pounds wheel um because i mean uh, they it's easy to carry it's easy to 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 deal with it because uh the the holy cow is pretty much like uh an emmentaler but i mean an emmentaler it's a, a 100 pound wheel so this is just easy to carry and this one is very smooth, uh, fruity, really buttery. So a really good melter. It's going to melt in your mouth. I love that cheese. Um, 
What else? I could say on this one. Well, uh, actually, uh, it has a, uh, won quite a few, uh, quite a few uh, awards. Okay, in 2017, third place by the American ACS, American Cheese Society. In 2016, second place. 2014 World uh, World Cheese Competition, best of class. 2013 Good Food Awards finalist, and then again. 2012 third place in the American Cheese Society. Reggie Jones has been uh, making this cheeses uh, in, like the Caroline said, in California, in Central Coast, and uh, they're making uh, some incredible cheeses, a nice variety and a nice blend. What I like on the Holy Cow is that it's, this one is actually a very young, we're looking at about four months. Normally it's being released by about two months, but, uh, and you can age it also really well all the way up to one year. And uh, when it's one year, it's a little bit, uh, not uh, a semi-soft or semi-firm, it's a uh, more of a firmer uh, style cheese. And uh, you have some crystallization. Uh, you gotta watch the cheese very careful because sometimes yeah. if there's too much humidity, these little pockets fill them up with water. Okay, so that's kind of, or way. Okay. All right, here are the ladies, and they're already eating. <laughs> oh, actually, <laughs> I, thought, I thought we were supposed to. <laughs> yeah, our donut bun was gone, so they're cheese. Yeah, this donut. That's a really good pairing. What? That is a really what? good pairing. I really <laughs> enjoyed that one. Can you start? I didn't you did like it, but I love the donut. The donut <laughs> is so, <laughs> that's my favorite style, old-fashioned donut, and it is so Good. Mm. good, good, good. Made me dance. If you chub like me, <laughs> make a little cheese out of it. Oh my god. Uh, no. Don't be. Uh. I can't. I, I can't. This is just good by itself. Mm. I really enjoyed that combination. Can, I really did. Mm. And okay. then this wine, delish. Let me try it again. I can't. Right. <laughs> you haven't tried it yet? <laughs> Second cheese. Do you want to go through? Oh, oh, oh. Huh? You want my feedback? Yeah. Okay. I really like this together. I feel like the cheese brings out like the butteriness in the donut and the texture. Since the old fashioned is so like crunchy and crispy with the creaminess of the cheese, I think it's a perfect combo. Yeah, I absolutely agree with you. I think like the moisture from the cake donut mixes really well with the cheese and it gives it kind of like that smooth texture. All the time. Yes. Texture for sure. <laughs> Thank you. The creaminess, I mean, with the wine, all four of these go with this this combination. You know, you, you basically have a. I can see the boreal. A blank board, and these wines all bring a little something to a classic donut like the old fashioned, and a classic creamy cheese like the holy cow. Um, you know, I feel like the borealis kind of, you know, those riper. Tropical fruit notes, you know, the guava, the melons, you know, the papaya, uh, really round out this cheese as well as the old fashioned. Uh, the acidity is there though, does cleanse the palate. I think the Calmere Chardonnay uh, is spot on with uh, both as well. Uh, the Borealis, go back to the Borealis, it's like a caramelized sugar note to this, uh, uh, this wine, which I think hits the, the sugar glaze in the donut perfectly. I think the Chardonnay hits up with the sour cream. You know, that tanginess to it, you know, that little bit of a, you know, nutmeg note. Uh, the Shannon Ridge, it's, you know, it's a, Petit Syrah is a soft wine, you know, the, the acid isn't uh, too too high on it, you know, you're getting really supple, velvety, rich fruit. And I think that even though it's a big wine, you know, it's 14 and 8 alcohol, it still can complement lighter style donuts and lighter style cheeses. And, Pinot in my world goes with everything, so uh, it's one know, of those that, that, that really you know is those kinda, elegant yeah. strawberries and raspberries, and pomegranate, red cherries, bing cherries, currants. You know those very food friendly wine, which is why most a lot of people love Chardonnay and Pinot Noir. It's a it's a fun wine because you can mix it and match it with so many different uh, uh, food items that because it just pairs so well. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the flavor after flavor that it leaves. It's just perfect. Yep, you know that acid is a palate cleanser. You know, you take, you know, put in, enjoy these wines. You know, take a little bite of one, have a little taste of the white. You know, 
drink a little water or drink more wine, cleanse your palate, go to the next wine. And that's how you kind of, you know, pull the flavors out. Everybody's palate's different. Everybody's going to taste differently. You know, uh, this old fashioned tastes different to everybody in this room probably and, and at home as well. So does the cheese and so do all, you know, all four wines. So, you know, take your time with them and kind of dive in and think about what flavors you're getting out of all of them. Uh, just a quick question to everybody. How many of you still have donuts left? <laughs> because I know too many were saying that when they're leaving, that by the time they hit sunset, the donuts are gone. Yeah. So please let us class? know how many donuts are still left. <laughs> is Joanne in our class? No, she's not in this class. Oh. There's a couple more people. No Joanne. <laughs> hey, Joanne. Hey, actually, donuts. Yeah. 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 Not a photo. Oh, <laughs> Is there okay. Any yeah. Next wine, uh, I'm sorry, next cheese would be, uh, of course, uh, Gorgeous Gouda, uh, produced by a co production of Old Chatham and uh, First Light in upstate New York. Uh, First Light, of course, being a goat cheese creamery and Old Chatham being a sheep milk creamery. They started forming a third company, uh, Le Trois. Um, Ménage à trois. There we go. Ménage à trois. Ménage à trois. Oh. There we go. Okay. Yeah. okay. Well, it's, it's French, so that's easy for me. <laughs> and uh, Tristan and Max, the two brothers, and then, of course, uh, Old Chatham, they did a really nice job pairing this. So this one is actually a three milk gouda, cow, goat, and sheep. And um, yeah, so what do you think about that? So, so this gouda is aged for. Uh, four months four to six months i would say um i think i mean it's very creamy uh i i like you know the little hint of uh goldiness at the end um it's very creamy because of the sheep's milk cheese and um, of course i mean with this Nice pairing. I mean, it's pink and pink, so the maybe line, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Similar, yeah. They look similar yeah. So to me. we we went. We decided we we gonna pair it with the color. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so yeah, let. Um, Should you eat this? Yeah, of course. The rind. Yeah. <laughs> but would, of course. Yeah, I wouldn't. Uh, please go please ahead. Go. Make this sure you one, take yeah. the rind off. <laughs> okay. Yes. Not on the donut. <laughs> no, the donut first. Yeah. So we're gonna see. I would just together. Sure. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Gorgeous. 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 Yes. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. No. Gorgeous. 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 So, Gorgeous. girls, what do you think? I don't know yet. We'll That's find really out. Good. We were trying to wait this time. Yeah. We didn't want oh. the first ones eating. No. Being called out for it. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Because the only thing I would do with all this is make a grilled cheese. <laughs> Straight up. That was ham, jambon. See, and he gets the it. Donut. He gets it. <laughs> he <laughs> said a grilled cheese with a jamon de Perry. National Donut Day is next week. So I know. It's supposed oh, to be always. Yeah. Donut. Yeah. Did you hear that? National, National Donut, donut Day. Is <laughs> what day is National Donut <laughs> Day? I was like, wait a minute. Uh, which June which company? June 5th, National, National Donut, donut Day. Donut yes. Day. Yes. <laughs> you know what we're doing. Is it good? Donuts. I like the combination. Donut grilled cheese. Donut grilled cheese. Donut grilled cheese special on Friday. Oh, maybe not. Maybe yeah. I'll eat it all. Okay. I don't know about what do you, you think? Guys. What's the pairing? What do you think? I think it goes well together. I like the fact that the donut is sweet, and this is a lot of sodium, so salty and sweet. And it, it bounces out. The goat at the end is really good. It too. kind of kicks in a little bit more when you eat it. The sugar. It breaks down the sweetness of the donut right it there. It does. Yeah. Right back yeah. here. So. <laughs> okay, so next week we have what? National Donut, Carl's Donut Day? National Donut Day, June 5th. We're going to not build cheese. Are you doing anything at the shop? or what? We're still What's working on, on we're still working on our specials for National Donut Day, but for sure we're doing six dollar glazed donut dozens mm. and then everything else is still still a surprise. <laughs> mm. Whoa. Yeah. So um, personally I'm not a big fan of it. 
Um, and I think it's maybe because I've had donuts so often that the pink donut is just kind of overpowering the cheese for me. So it's not not my favorite. I'm with you. But, I like yeah. I like it. I feel like the cheese really mellows out the sweetness of the donut. So it's not like I'm not generally a fan of the pink sprinkled. It's too much for me. But with the cheese, I think it kind of calms it down, which is an interesting effect for sure. Chills it out. Okay, yeah. so honestly, how many donuts do you eat? I eat a lot of donut holes. <laughs> Rock, how many donuts do you eat a day? A day? Oh. Or just like... Um, I don't know. It ranges from one to three or four, depending on if there's new flavors. Donut, yeah. Donut. Yeah. If it's, if it's a new um, flavor day, we're just like, let's try yeah. that. Oh, we're not sure. Let's try that some more. <laughs> and it's honestly like, I'll probably eat three quarters of the donut if I'm going to do it. Because it's like, why not just eat uh -huh. most of it? Donut holes, I take down at least seven a day. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. That's almost a donut. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty close. I think it's more than a donut, honestly. <laughs> Just like trying to more calories. Yeah. All right. Um, Wine-wise, uh, the Borealis with the pink donut is as good as I can get. I mean, it's spot on. I mean, the, the sweetness that you're getting with the wine, the sweetness with the pink frosting, uh, it's, it's still cleansing. It's still got acid. Uh, I think the Chardonnay really matches up well with the Gouda. Um, you know, and I agree with the, with the ladies that that saltiness kind of matches up with the sweetness. You know, you're going through both of them. Um, for the Reds, you know, they'll both match up. You know, I would say that the Reds are probably more suited toward the cheese than the donut. Uh, that, that sweetness in the donut is tough to, tough to pair up. You really need something that complements that. And I think the, the Borealis really does that. Yeah, it's a, I think it's a great combination. What I do like on the Borealis is that it's a crisp, clean, uh, a fruity finish, but not too sweet. And then typical Tourgau in the back, it just leaves this really nice coating. Yep. So I, I do like it. And it has that hint of Gewürztraminer in there. So it's it's a very good pair. I think when that. you're smelling the pink frosting, you get a lot of the, the Gewürztraminer really shines out. You yep. know, it's like flowers and pink sugar, and it just all really matches up well together. Absolutely. What do you guys think? Let us know. Write in. And <laughs> yeah, this is any definitely questions you have. One please. of the more interactive classes. You know, yeah. these are, you know, this is out of the box a little bit. Yeah. You know, when yeah, you're talking, you know, <laughs> nothing <laughs> happens. You know, no so, pun intended, out of the box. How, how do things <laughs> <laughs> work, work out? How do they work together? And how do you start thinking about creating a pairing? You know, uh, this is a great way to play around and, you know, well, it was without challenging. any pretentiousness. It's just, hey, you taste it. You know, taste this one. Taste that one. Go back and forth. Yeah. You know, I mean, it was very challenging when we when we first started. Brian brought it up, actually. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Brian. So um, Brian. when we started Hi, talking about it, it was like cheese and donuts. It's like, oh, come on. And then we started tasting the samples, and we, we sampled the cheeses along with it. And it's like, wait a minute. This is actually not a bad idea. Yeah. OK. And then you brought the wine I, over to yeah. uh, with the flavor notes of the cheeses and the taste of the donuts. In my head, I was like, oh, man, they want Dober Soul, but they only want to drink Cabernet. It yeah. <laughs> just doesn't make sense. How are we going to do this? You know, what are we going to go? You know, yeah. you know, we, we tasted, went back and forth, and, you know, I, I think we hit some stars. I think. Yeah. Uh, I, I like the uh, gorgeous Gouda. It has this really nice, uh, bloomy flavor. Um, it's rich, but it's not. Okay, it's soft. It's, it's velvety. It has this really nice line. And then, like you said, at the end, it has this goatee finish. Okay, so I need to talk to Max next time I get a chance and find out the percentages of the milk. Because you do can taste all three. You have yeah. the fattiness and creaminess of the sheep's milk. Um, you have the goat and then, of course, the cow. Huh? It's one of the reasons I thoroughly think that the petite Syrah goes well with this because you're talking generally animals that are, you know, raised in cooler climates, right. a little bit, you know, in the mountains and so forth, where, where this varietal really thrives. And it's kind of really unique. Actually, we, uh, Max called me up. Uh, actually, I called Max and we had a conversation 
about some of his cheeses and where the production is with everything that's going on. And he tells me, hey, by the way, we got a new cheese and I want your feedback on it. So Caroline uh, and everybody here tasted it. Uh, just a small wedge that we got so, sent out. Of the gorgeous? Of the gorgeous. Yes. And Honestly, was, I squealed when I saw it because you just see this pink cheese. And I was like, oh, <laughs> it looks so like cute. cake. <laughs> it looks like a big old cake. Yeah, it was like a cheese cute. cake. It's like this pink, like legitimately. Yeah, right yeah, yeah right on the right. Really right it's here. so cute. Okay. So, yeah, so we were very excited about it and we got a shipment sent out. And I just told him, I says, you go up, you know, go ahead and send us. 20 wheels for starters and yeah. now we're already going through it and we actually have to replace this because a lot of people that tasted this cheese is like wait a minute this is a fantastic yeah, cheese it goes very well with different wines and it has a very oh, nice yeah. palette flavor profile so uh, we're mm -hmm. very excited about it okay you should tell him if he wants to find another animal he can match up with the four varieties here here we go so, <laughs> yes I'm, well i'm gonna call, uh, call him <laughs> and actually i'm gonna talk to him tomorrow again what would, you, what would you think? I, if you had another another animal's milk to this, <laughs> well, you know, we were talking about donkey cheese and donkey. Uh, uh, a camel wow. cheese, and uh, so no, I don't think donkey uh, milk cheese. Yeah, a llama cheese. I mean, it's kind of interesting <laughs> of uh, the varietals that are coming up all of a sudden. <coughs> Tough times. Um, Donkey cheese out of uh, Croatia <laughs> is actually quite interesting. <laughs> Croatia? Out of Croatia, yes. Donkey cheese out of Croatia. It was like... No, this donkey. Is <laughs> okay. Yeah. They went so far as to make cheese from it. Exactly. Oh I mean, goodness. think about it. Or even camel cheese. I mean, would you think of the idea of making camel cheese? Um, why not? Why and not? it's actually very similar on the flavor notes as a feta but with a very uh, gamey taste to it so it's kind of funky it's real funky so no i don't think we need any other milk in that i think they did a nice job with this and um they should stick with it yes agree yeah. i me... second that okay oh hello what's up you guys how are you guys acting the cheese class so far any questions? Do you guys like the donut and the cheese together? Because honestly, I was very skeptical about this. I was like, you guys are going to have to make me a believer Believe with this it class. Or yeah. not. So, but it's not bad. It's not. No, I really I, I am it's pleasantly. It's not bad. Just grilled cheese, everything. And we should. I don't know. Maybe it was a little bit of an oddball, but who doesn't like all three? Maybe a little bit separately, but whatever. Delicious all together. Maybe yeah. not the best, but still really, really tasty. Very good. Y'all yeah. give us feedback. What do you yeah. think? What do you think so far? Anybody? Allison, what you think? Tell me, girl. <laughs> Somebody like the Dolce. Allison like the Tori Dolce? Yeah. Oh, oh, we ain't got no meat on here. Yeah. We do I believe you. What's that? Go get us some meat. We have some. Go we'll get some meat, girl. Oh, the borealis is actually. Oh my, my gosh! This that is my new favorite is. wine. And I've been, I've been wanting to try this valley, the Willamette Valley out of Oregon. I've never had it before, but now after tasting it, yeah, I like. I'm a true believer that it is really, really good, and it is up and coming with like you know California and Oregon and Washington. I think I said it. It's so weird to say that it's a clean tasting. Wine. Mm. Like you to me, right? is no. right. Yeah. <laughs> the only Very wine term I know. Do what? Do what? Yeah, Andrea. Heck yeah. What is appropriate? Are, are your life improved because of this? No. no. Oh, I thought she said her life isn't significant. Her life. Yes, her life. Not our life. Okay. Her life. Yeah. yeah. Andrea's life is significantly improved. That's a big word, y'all. Dang. You want some more wine? Yeah. You guys want, want some more wine? wine. It's going to be the next one. Guys, when's when the red wine? Red, 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 red wine? 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 Why do I tilt the glass like it's beer? That's what I was doing. I did that to his. You want to get that? I think I get on there or what? Yeah, I was trying to pour a perfect pint. 
Isn't that the next class? Is it beer? No. No? Let's try, you guys. We got me. Oh, take one and pass down. There you go. Okay, this is awesome. Thanks. Buddy. You're welcome. Yeah, I you just think you're going to play as soon as you play. You want to think of yourself. Right All right. <laughs> just throwing meat everywhere. Meat. I got meat for you. We, so we have right now is Italiano prosciutto. Um, and then a little bit of the um, Copa, Copa Dolce. Copa Dolce. Oh, that. She's with. Oh, she's with. She's with. Because we are curious to what it smelled like. Hey, the cheese whiz and the chicken not. and a biscuit well, actually, is really tasty. You gotta say it. Please don't eat don't cheese Don't worry, whiz. we're not eating no, it. It's expired. one molecule away from plastic. It's gross. It's just and for you show. And you want to hear something? I must have had this can at least for five years. Oh, man. So look at the expiration. Oh, oh it's not expired yet, oh, just right. so you know. We, we did look at it. <laughs> just mm, kidding mm, with mm, the five mm, years. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> All right, so I think we're moving on to the fritter pairing next. Um, honestly, fritters are our number one seller, but for me, it took me a really long time to get into it. When I was younger, I didn't like them. They they kind of intimidated me. They were big. They were like so much darker than all the other donuts. They were weird shaped. I was not a fan. But as I've grown up, I'm like, this is definitely the best donut we have. It has full full chunks of apple, tons of cinnamon. The glaze on it is good. I'm such a texture person. So the crunchy outsides and then like the nice soft inside is really, really what gets me. Uh, Brock has a fun fact for you. little interesting fact. It's why I like the <laughs> apple fritter. Um, apple fritters, at least the ones we make, are made from the dough that is left over from the donuts that are stamped out. And so it's, I don't know why I think it's such a, like a funny thing. That's why I like it. It's just, we take Zero all that waste. dough. Yeah, we take all that <laughs> leftover dough, mix it with the cinnamon and apples, and then that's how we get such an amazing donut. And it's just from the leftovers. So, it's, yeah, I love it. I'm excited for this cheese pairing because my grandpa always did apple pie with American cheese on it. And I could never, I was like, I'm not trying that. That sounds gross. Ooh. But now that we're doing other cheese with other <laughs> sweet things, I'm like, I'm excited to see how cheese and apples really, really work together. There yeah. you go. Or French sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> mm, What's kind of interesting for me, growing up in Europe, and Caroline can agree with me most likely, um, European donuts are not that sweet. So uh, apple fritter growing up was one of my favorites, always has been. And um, we used to go all the way down to the next town because we didn't have a bakery and uh, picked up the apple fritters on Saturday. That was our little treat. And um, so apple fritter over here, I'm trying very hard like to find donuts there. that are not that sweet. <laughs> And um, that's one thing I noticed on your guys' apple fritter. Yeah. Um, it is not sweet like No some extra of the added sugar. Right. That's pretty much what's already yeah. supposed to be there is there. We're not trying to hide anything else. <laughs> All right. But the thing I would like to add to is I'm with you. When I was uh, young, I didn't like this so much the cinnamon. Yeah. And, and you know, it took me time, you know, to get used to that cinnamon thing. But now, I mean, cinnamon, it's, for me, it's, uh, it, I, I just love it. And of course, you know, when you want that, that little crunchy yeah, and the crispy. apple, yeah, crispy. Yeah. It, yeah, it's really nice. I feel like there's a donut for like every stage of your life. Like you're a little kid, you're like, I want the pink sprinkled. I want all the <laughs> sugar. And then you get old and you're like maybe just a glaze and then you get old and you're like just the plain cake like there's it, there's always a donut for you no matter no matter what your age is so well cheese is kind of that way yeah yeah cheese is yeah. that way i mean yeah. you know the more your Mozzarella palate kind of changes cheese the older when you're you get <laughs> you okay so like blue. well my well, question is now actually how do you two <laughs> stay so thin eating all these donuts i know i didn't <laughs> we Honestly, we love to work out and then we love to eat donuts. Yeah. So it's, it's, we love to work out and especially after being at work all day, it's just sometimes we feel like got to go burn off some yeah. frustrations a little bit. A Working with your family energy. is tough, 
So there's a lot of conflict that can't really be handled at work. So you got to go find somewhere else to take care of it. <laughs> Mom and dad, we still love you. Yeah. <laughs> we love you. Oh, I haven't done it yet. Did you do the, did you do it? I've been a chatty Kathy. I did. I need a little bit more to get it correct. Someone yeah. wants to know, will the lovely doe let people adopt me? <laughs> Absolutely. Do you want to work for Carl's though? That's the thing. Heck yeah. I if mean, you're part of the family, you have to work at Carl's. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Basil Hayden Cheddar. Um, oh. Beehive produced by Beehive in uh, in Utah. Uh, Pat and his brother Tim, brother-in-law Tim, uh, made this cheese a few years ago as a poor me a slice and um, basil Hayden cheddar. I'm sorry, basil Hayden cheddar. Yeah, poor me a slice. We call it also poor me a slice. Uh, poor me a uh, basil Hayden. Obviously, the whiskey. Uh, one of the fastest growing in the United States, a typical Y profile. And there's a lot of cheeses, but uh, taking a cheese and rubbing it on the outside was Basil Hayden, and then cryovacking this promontory that they're making and just letting it age within the cryovac. Um, Caroline, what do you think? Oh, um. <laughs> I really enjoy, uh, I mean, cheeses uh, from Beehive Cheese Company. That's water. Well, first of all, because they put a lot of love in their cheese. And I mean, I would say uh, all the producer, I mean, the artisan producer in the United States put a lot of love when they're making a cheese. And, and this is, um, this is the the thing I really, really enjoy to be, I mean, from France and be over here, that older artisanal cheese maker put their love into their cheese. And even, you know, if they, they I mean, sometimes I would say they, the, the first step is to, to copy a cheese from United States, but a, a step better because they had something, you know, they, it, it's it's like uh, old world and new world in cheese, and uh, and I I really really enjoy you know all my my American cheese. Um, well, the the Pumio slice um, it's very um, it's very creamy. I mean, for a cheddar, very sweet, and especially with the hint uh, of bourbon. And and I really enjoyed that cheese. Um, yeah, well, Basil Hayden been around okay. since 1776, and um, has a very huge following. Okay, so the idea of taking the promontory and rubbing it on the outside was the Basil Hayden. I thought it was genius. Okay, but that's again Beehive. They're doing a lot of these. Um, of course, they're doing, they did the promontory, they did the uh, barely bust, they did the uh, uh, sea hive, they did the Cajun John, um, they're doing so many different cheeses. We even make and work with Pat and, and Tim on some private labels. We have one that is for one of the casinos, a sake rubbed uh, cheddar. So that's kind of interesting. So uh, it gets kind of this, this white crustiness on the outside that is just it's excellent okay so <laughs> this one here the basil hayden um pat introduced me to that cheese at the last food show and they had just changed it and they just worked with it and it's just wonderful yeah i think their uh the, the their production are unique yes absolutely yeah and they're, again, a family-owned business, um, a tradition that they created now since 2005, 2006. Uh, the, the kids work in the company, uh, same as at Carl's, and I think it's a, a phenomenal family. I love working with them. Tell me about the wines you think was this. I mean, pairing-wise, this cheese, 
the fritter, and all the wines. Uh, it's the best pairing to me personally. I think they nailed it when they were talking about apple pie with you know cheddar cheese, you know, and you're you know a cool day and you get a little bourbon with you, you know. I think that's why the velvet fog goes well. You know, think of that velvety texture on a cool day, a little foggy in the little mid afternoon. Uh, Chardonnay with apples uh, and, and a creamier cheese are, are perfect things. A little bit of that oaks, so you're going to get a lot of those winter spices, the cinnamon, the nutmeg. You know, that caramelization really goes out well with the, with, with both the cheeses. Uh, the Borealis, like I said, it's you know it's a food friendly wine. It's something that you can kind of find a little bit. Of, I think you know the Gravitstamine really lifts it up, makes it a little bit you know floral. You know, and you've got the sweet texture with the peaches and the, the, the tropical fruit. Uh, that you're going to get from the Pinot Gris and the Mueller. And then I think, you know, the Riesling is kind of like that palate cleanser. It kind of washes it all. And then, you know, Shannon Ridge, high climate, cold. You think of, you know, where apples grow, you know. This is kind of, you know, this is a no-brainer pairing. This is definitely the easiest one. that You can find correlation with all the wines in both the cheese and the, the apple fritter yeah. all at once. I like it. The, the pairing, the, the creaminess. And then the apple fritter not being too sweet, and then the wine with it. I think it's an excellent pairing. Let us know what you think on those. Okay. Oh, Brian, give me thumbs up. So I guess you all like it. Yeah. Cool. Hi, Nicole. Hey guys. Hello. So this is definitely one of my oh, favorite. Like this is fantastic. Um, we kind of had a little, if you still have some of the Pormia slice uh, cheese left, I would encourage you to eat it a little bit reverse, I guess. You know, most people would go for uh, the thinner tip. So eat the butt the, first the, or what? No, no, no. So, so the way that the cheese is, the, the, the cheese is soaked in the whiskey. So all the whiskey is on the exterior of the, of the cheese. And so you end up with a lot more sweetness on the, on the rind, if you may. And it, if you eat it the other, from Give me the that. rind in, I'm it is so it. sweet. The butt in. No, 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 no. the rind end in. Just just yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Eat, it, eat, it, eat it from the you rind towards the center, <laughs> and it, the, oh. the sweetness of that cheese comes out so go. much nicer. You. Oh, you, you, thanks. She just, she just <laughs> ate my rind. <laughs> you want some more? Uh, oh, oh that's, yes, please. Here we go. Thank you so very much. You're welcome. And then, I see what you're saying. And then, hey, you then, guys, I have I have a suggestion. Go, go. Can we make, um, so c c coming back to your donut, uh, Which monkey one? bread Ooh. With, with the cheese melted into it. With cheese melted into it. And to top it all off. Oh, 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 oh. What? what? You said it earlier. Come on, Marissa. Vanilla bean ice cream. Oh. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Warm. 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 So we'll warm up the ice. Yeah. Vanilla ice. Yeah. So we'll warm up the monkey bread. We love monkey bread more than we love donuts. Like we get everything. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? Uh huh. Okay. I know where we get the cheese. Yeah. Yeah. That that sounds amazing. We're gonna get Pat to donate some. No, I feel like that meat after eating it. Diabetes. <laughs> Diabetes. Diabetes. <laughs> so we got Maritza, how many yes. pans should we get of this monkey bread and base laid? Oh, well, it depends on how As many people are going to stop by. For the weekend. How many people are going to stop by? I mean, if we have some takers. What's up? Raise your hand or what? Raise your hand. We'll get, we'll get hey, some bacon. We can go ahead and get like yeah. 30 With some bacon? Made. I feel like we can sure do that. Yeah. yeah. It's a yeah. whole meal now. Mm. Okay, so Absolutely. let's go ahead and maybe do a one or two batches yeah. where we can uh, sample that. Yeah. Or should we just surprise oh. everybody in doing that? Whichever you would prefer. That'd Monkey awesome. bread and basil hayden. I love it. Yeah, let's choose Look the at you over here. Glass. Oh, yeah. We're excited. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. We'll, pair it, we'll pair it up with a glass Good of choice. Wine. Good choice, Maritza. Ladies, hey, Maritza. Combination of the Maritza. Cheers to you. Thank I you. love that Ooh. idea. Cheers. Cheers. Round of applause. Round of applause. <laughs> so let's do the timeline for three weeks for that monkey bread and basil Hayden. We do a sample uh, next week, okay. and then we're going to go ahead and set it up for in three weeks from now. Okay. 
for a Friday, and we pick it up Friday morning, and we just use a, a nice pan for that. Yeah, uh, maybe an aluminum tin or something. Yeah, like that. yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Cool. Good. Excited. See, this is how we come up with we. different things. This, the ladies. Yeah, the ladies. It was their choice. The ends did it. Yes. The butt ends. The M ends. The butt ends. The ends. <laughs> We're at the butt, I guess, end of the table. The butt of the jokes. Mm. <laughs> So we were talking about earlier, um, and and a couple of customers asked why do donuts with uh, cheese, and at the end of every cheese board or charcuterie board, it's all about the fun with their family and sharing, and also finding your palate of what you like or what you would eat with that next cheese, next time. What do you eat? And then you always come up with different ideas like we just did right now. And in our heads, we always think cheese automatically. Yeah. <laughs> what kind of cheese can we add to this to make it better? <laughs> How about all of them? <laughs> and then most of the time. Yeah. 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 We should have seen our lunch today. We should have seen our lunch today. So we had potatoes and we found all these buttons of cheese. Butts. All the butts. And, and she, she, she traded shred. it. Yep. And then melted it in the oven. A little bit how of many, bacon. How many different cheeses was that? Like five? No. no. It, was it was a lot. Seven. It was Double that. Seven, yeah. Seven, it, was like, it was like ten. Ten. God. That was good. Wow. That was good. So, <laughs> hey, new menu item? Mm -hmm. It's going to be ever-changing, though, so you have to come back every day because every day is going to be different. Ha-ha. <laughs> it's a surprise. <laughs> surprise. <laughs> well, it was very good. It was awesome. Yeah, it was pretty tasty. Yeah, it was very good on what I got to taste, so that was a great idea. Oh, I know. He, well, he showed up late to the party. <coughs> it was a great move. It's it was okay. a great way of using up the cheese and the butts of the meat. So, it's good choice. Booty! <laughs> All right. So... Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just about ready for that. So blue, blue chocolate world is definitely red wine. Do what? Oh, yeah. That uh, meat's a Copa, Copa Dolce. Dolce. Yeah. Oh, Any questions so far? Both, both the wines that you that everybody has, the Shandon Ridge and the Borealis. The Borealis is, is biodynamic and sustainable. All the wines are sustainable, though, as well as Shannon Ridge. Shannon Ridge actually has their own herd of sheep that uh, graze the fields. They're a farm. They're completely off the grid. They're solar. They focus really on, on making high high mountain high quality fruit. Uh, in a sustainable way, and their herd of sheep, uh, you know, graze through the uh, the vineyards. They have not obviously why there's grapes on there because they would eat them, but the rest of the year, uh, and they do make a wine called Buckshack, which is here at Kierden Way. Uh, the Buckshack is a famous little uh, shack in the back of the vineyards where they where they shave the sheep. Where Grandpa used to go out. If you have if you haven't, or if you have a chance, uh, both of these winemakers. Uh, put together a short clip and a video uh, that are available on uh, the website for Cured and Way. Yes. Uh, be it YouTube or Instagram. I'm not sure which one, but, uh, you know, a, a nice little minute, minute and a half clip that, you know, gives you a little insight into their world. And I think they were both really nice. I mean, they, I think it was fantastic. And uh, they, they, they we really well. you appreciate kind of a, them doing it. I mean, yeah. again, it's, it's extra time out of their time and uh, producing this short video introducing this wine. I think yeah. that's something we should do more often. I agree. I mean, they're the stars. You know, we're just here to give our own commentary and talk about how things might work. You know, but the winemakers and yeah. the cheese makers. I, the I really enjoyed, are, are the yeah. Ones. I really enjoyed them uh, putting sheep uh, through, the, through the, the, the grapes and, I mean, through the whole vineyard and using that as a fertilizer. They're also making their own solar. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of things that uh, they are really, what's, what's interesting is on how this has shifted on being so focused on being sustainable. Yeah, okay, I mean, and I mean, that's, that's what we have to do now with what's happening, okay? So being sustainable from fish farming to the farm to make cheese to wineries now, I think it's a fantastic um, commitment of the producers to do that. No, I mean, 
these top end products that you're getting, you know, whether it be cheese or whether it be wine, they're whether or not they, it costs a lot of money to be organic, and it costs a lot of money to, to get some of these certifications, and whether or not they, you know, when they go through and, and actually spend that money, it's, I mean, it's a special thing. Uh, but almost all of them nowadays are. They're farmers. They grow. They care about what they're making. You know, unless you're talking about mass-produced wine or mass-produced cheese, you know, don't eat processed cheese. It's not good for you. If you have a dairy tolerance, processed cheese is a no-no. You can eat these cheeses, as you were telling me, I think, or one of you, that a dairy-tolerant person can have a non-processed cheese because there is no lactose because the lactose is removed. Well, the lactose the is actually, well, it's not so much removed. The lactose is in the way. So the older the cheese, the less whey is in the cheese, and obviously the less lactose. Okay, so that's why uh, people that are lactose intolerant can eat the hard cheeses, uh, the semi-firm cheeses, uh, everything that usually what I would say aged about over six to eight months. Okay, so it's drier. And then, of course, there is no lactose in sheep and uh, goat's milk cheeses. Okay, and then uh, if you take Gorgeous George, for example, I'm pretty sure by six months, uh, being cow, goat, and sheep, uh, I would try it. Yep. And I think, you know, with wine, people have an issue with sulfites. You know, yeah. you, you drink enough wine, you can tell when you had a wine that I don't care if you have a sulfite sensitivity or not. You know, it's just like drinking. It's like having too much MSG. In a yeah. sense. There's dehydration factor to it. There's a little headache. There's you know, there's some discomfort. When you're talking about you know the quality and the sustainability and the, the, the type of wine that these you know winemakers that level that they're at, you know the, the sulfite level way below what forget about what's required by law. Like, I mean, they do their best to eliminate you know there's always going to be sulfites it's a preservative your wine wouldn't last more than a certain amount of time without it there are natural wines you're right but not all you know they're yeah. they're some can be a little aggressive some can be a little you know different you know how they last is different as well but a normal basic wine uh, we've got to source out people that, that care about what they're growing and i heard uh, not too long ago actually because uh, certain wines sulfates always affected me and then I talked to somebody about it and they actually told me to drink more water Whiskey. yeah well water can surely dilute it yeah you know you're okay. you know there's different there's sulfur there's sulfites there's several different levels that go into almost everybody sprays sulfur on their vineyards it's to you know a way to uh, you know to make sure your crop isn't destroyed and so forth you got to be there if something's affecting your vineyard or your 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 plants or your vegetables you're growing, are you just going to lose a whole crop, or you're going to do something sustainable that makes sense that you can use to save your crop? Uh, there's a lot of things that it's you know uh, we all have little small little farms in our houses probably or growing tomatoes or something. It's not the easiest thing. Yeah. And when you're growing something like a grape that you're trellised and your your the, the amount of money that goes into producing wine they don't mess around i mean they're well, doing their best to you know mitigate all of those things and, and keep sulfites at a low and low. it's the labor i mean again it's the hard labor that is put into making wines because i know i pick grapes in europe and we would have this this uh, uh, funnel on the back okay and then we would walk up the hill okay when it was empty and then we would walk when it's full, uh, full we would walk down the hill and then just dump it sideways into the cart. Is that still used? Or is that still, um, do they use baskets? Or do they use, you know, you're mass produced, you're, you know, I don't know brands, everybody knows them. You know, the ones you see uh, all over the place in supermarkets and so forth are mechanically harvested. So once they're in the vineyards and they're chopping stuff off, everything's getting kind of thrown on in there whatever's in the field is getting is in your wine you know so when you say you want a vegan wine you better choose somebody that hand selects and picks grapes individually you know you, you, there's no way to stop that manual harvester for you know this is the new zealand sauvignon blanc has it in that distinctive flavor right because of that because once you 
pierce the skin of that grape, it goes through a chemical process that gives it a certain flavor compound, uh, which is what New Zealand wineries look for. Not all, but you know, the mass produced ones uh, go at. But most, you know, artisanal producers are, are, are hand harvesting, and right. whether they put them in baskets or on, you know, conveyor belts or trucks or whatever. The, 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 as the years go by, more and more are learning from each other and understanding, you know, pick in the early morning, when, you know, when it's the coldest, get it to the, you know, the winery as quickly as possible. You know, let's start this process because once, once it's taken off the line it's 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 going it's going I mean, there's chemicals there's processes that's going on right automatically so the one thing that uh, i was interesting it was just uh, i was just reading was what's happening now with COVID, uh is that in europe for example the migration workers and i'm pretty sure that's over here too uh they're being hindered from traveling and helping these farmers and harvesting okay and uh they're kind of worried about now on tending the farms, on tending the harvests, because I mean, it's it's going down from a lot of um, Russian, Polish uh, farm workers that are coming down to Ukraine, that are coming down into Europe, into Southern Europe, Germany, France, uh, uh, Belgium, um, Spain, and, and they're going down as they're harvesting and it starts in Holland with asparagus season and strawberry season. And then of course it goes into Belgium and then France. Um, so they're having problems right now and fear that they're not gonna have enough workers to uh, uh, work the fields, to harvest all the grapes in fall if they don't go back to uh, opening the, the borders. Yeah, certainly there's definitely gonna be challenges. No doubt about it. You know what I mean? I mean, South Africa almost lost their whole ass vintage because the government, you know, uh, deemed uh, distilleries and wineries uh, non-essential. So they quickly changed about a week or so later, realizing that you know, the Southern Hemisphere, their harvest is generally in March, and you know, ours in the Northern Hemisphere is usually in September and October, sometimes earlier, sometimes later. Uh, so it was a real crisis, you know, in the Southern <laughs> Hemisphere with with COVID going on. Yeah. So, you know, these drastic measures that a lot of these governments were taking, you know, they, they, they affect a lot of different things, you know. Um, having, fortunately, having, they've, they've had a good vintage. Things in the Southern Hemisphere came out, came out great this year. It, it should be stellar. Yeah. Having a brother living in uh, Cape Town, South Africa, owning a restaurant, we actually just recently talked about in the conversation in regard to that. Uh, my brother, Ulf, Typical German name, um, owns a restaurant, Italian restaurant down in Cape Town, and uh, we were talking about all that, uh, the harvesting and, and everything, problems that are forced to that. Matter of fact, they're still on takeout, okay, so they cannot go back into the restaurant yet, but they can do at least takeout, okay, so they just opened that up, so that's kind of interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not an expert on sulfites, for sure, uh, but sulfites are in every fruit impossible to avoid all sulfites yeah. uh, whether it be tomatoes raspberries strawberries or grapes um, but the addition of sulfites can be, can be put to a certain level okay all right um brooke or amber yes introduce the last donut the last donut okay before we get to the last donut i do have a question for everyone me and Brock put this first cheese with the fritter, and we enjoyed it a lot more than the cheese it's paired with. So we were wondering if anyone else mixed and matched and kind of had a had a thing. Blue cheese with the fritter, somebody like. Ooh, blue <laughs> cheese with the fritter. Yeah. Thank okay. you. Blue cheese and fritter. I mean, apple and fritter, yeah. I mean, apple and apple, blue, blue cheese. cheese. Yeah, yeah yes. I guess that makes sense. It's an old-fashioned and formulas. Yeah. Yeah, this first cheese I feel like is our favorite. It's pairing nicely oh, yeah. with all of them. Definitely. Yeah. Holy cow. Yeah. Yeah. Holy cow. yeah. It's good. Cow's excellent. Yeah. So the last one we have here is just our devil's food cake, and then we're doing it with a blue, yes. blue Correct. cheese. And I'm excited for this one. I feel like it's either gonna nail it or it's gonna be <laughs> funky. <laughs> so I'm excited to try it. Well, blue cheese and <coughs> is funky chocolate. in itself. Yeah. Yeah, blue Good cheese experience. and chocolate actually go very well. Yeah. And. Um, it's kind of interesting. So uh, this 
blue cheese, Caroline, why don't yeah. you introduce that? So the blue moon blue is, moon. yes, it's made by First Light Creamery in East Bethany, New York. Um, very creamy, um, a really nice tangy finish of goat's milk. Um, I would say it was obvious uh, to do the chocolate and blue cheese pairing because uh, at the end of the class uh, in you. February, because we had a, a chocolate and cheese pairing in February, the favorite uh, pairing was the 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 blue cheese. No, it was not the No, it was the the one your favorite. The favorite cheese. Anyway, the blue. Oh, the Bavarian blue. Yeah, yes. the Bavarian blue wow. and the dark chocolate. So. We decide uh, to pair it together, and I hope you're going to enjoy it. Well, obviously, um, the the texture of the donuts uh, it's more uh, you know light and fluffy, and uh, and the glaze on the top more maybe more sweet. So I hope I mean I hope you're going to enjoy that pairing. Again, that's a cheese. Yeah, I feel like it's super interesting. I think the first bite is a little bit shocking, like maybe a <laughs> tiny bit off putting, but once the icing kind of blends with the blue cheese, it's a lot creamier and kind of <laughs> the coats your tongue, which is a weird thing to say, but it just kind of binds together and it's a lot. It's a lot nicer yeah, than that first together. initial bite. <laughs> blends together really well. And as someone that does not usually like blue cheese, True. I actually really enjoy that together. Yeah. Well, blue cheese is always one of those love-hate relationships. I love blue cheese. Okay. I love all the funky cheeses. Yep. <laughs> exactly. So yeah. it's always been a love-hate relationship with a lot of people. Yeah. Because, oh my God, it's blue. When you cut into it. Well, yeah. There's you know, so many different styles, you know, whether it's. You know, it is aggressive, <laughs> is it the funkiness, or is it creamy, is it soft, is it tangy, but it, you know, this falls on that creamier side, that softer texture. Yeah. But, then, oh, oh, sorry. Go ahead. They not so, 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 yeah, pungent, but the, the thing is, uh, those goats um, are grass-fed, so that means the terroir is very, is very present in the cheese, when, when you eat, you, you could taste all the... The, the terroir, I mean, it's uh, it's high quality milk, uh, so all the flavor are in the, in the cheese. <laughs> all right, we're gonna have a breakdown over here. <laughs> so I am not down. I'm not whatsoever. Either. But, okay, so I've never been a fan of chocolate and blue. I'm more of a honey and blue cheese kind of girl. <laughs> Whoa, wait. So I had it together, then I had a sip of wine. Girl, no, not my cup of tea. <laughs> oh, oh, if you sorry. saw her reaction, you'd be crying yeah. like me. We're on oh. the blue cheese. Yeah, get it. Get it. Get it. I mean, you Try already it. ate half what? that total. Why? This was actually right in front of us from the beginning, so we've already tried this. They've been eating it. Their our donuts already gone. <laughs> and our donut is gone. Chair. Chair. <sighs> Right. Share. Yes. I'll take some blue. I can't. I, I, like it. I, I love blue cheese. cheese. I did not like blue but cheese together, before. So that's why I tried it with it. chocolate. Ladies, okay, try it together like that. Some of the Shannon Rich. Have some of the red. With yeah, have yes, some of the red. Oh. Uh, uh, really uh, so we're gonna have the Shannon Ridge now. With uh, yeah, put it in here. <laughs> You don't have chunk luggage. <laughs> this right I don't want to waste it. And I, and I also think it's proportions. Take yeah. a take a decent sized piece of the chocolate donut, yeah. a little piece of the blue cheese. Yeah. Put them in, Would let it melt like in your mouth, make it creamy, yeah, the and then, like and the then take a sip of the wine. Would yeah. you like that? Right. Yes. Yeah. 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 See how it melts, and then it's take the wine, and you're going to get a lot more of. Yeah. It's going to bring out a little bit more fruit, a little bit more texture. Cleanse your palate. Okay, take some blue, take some chocolate, 
just a little bit Take of blue. Some blood. More chocolate. More chocolate. <laughs> More chocolate never hurts. <laughs> Thank you. You try for me. <laughs> I just oh, saw okay. the replay on that. <laughs> <laughs> Can't do it. What do you think? Mm. 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 This is delicious. It's so mm. good. Mm. Actually, though, no. oh. all that's missing oh. is a cherry. Oh. 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 It's missing some cherry, and then that'd be really tasty. Oh. It's missing just a little bit put of sweetness. Put a little pinot in your glass. Yeah. Put, put the pinot in. Take the pinot. I feel like I took like a really... I got the solution for that. What? <laughs> put some more wine, please. <laughs> <laughs> more wine never hurts, right? Did you already try it? Do you like it? Oh, sorry. Okay. Mm. 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 This is stressing me out right now, you guys. It's stressing What's me out. What's going on? Why are you so stressed? It's just throwing at the cheese. Because it's wild and... Go ahead, go ahead. Can I go get some cherries? We don't have any. Uh, we don't have any open. Mm. We don't have any cherries mm. open. No. Mm. That one's really strong. You have to have that balance. It's very strong. Yeah, it's exactly. Cherry. What? 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 Black forest cake. Black yeah. forest cake with the cherries, a little bit of blue, like instead of the like the like the icing. Be a little bit of a um, that blue cheese ice cream kind of thing Maybe inside. Sort of I'm gonna try it with apple like fritter. Cherry dessert. Is there another apple the fritter anywhere? Right Can we have Friday. some of your donuts? We can do a dessert with the family meal. Yeah, we have a goat. That'd be enough. Okay, we have, we have I'm down with blue box. cheese and apple we fritter. That's donut. cool. We Chocolate up. donut. And mm. <laughs> what y'all think? Anyone like it? Anyone don't like it? Andrea loves it. Yeah. We know Andrea. Well, Andrea, Andrea loves it. She knows how. Everything. I don't know. I do like it with the apple fit, the fritter a lot. It's good the, with apple fritter. The blue, blue with the apple. Yeah, mm -hmm. apple fritter. We're almost out of donuts, you guys. We've been and we've been we've been we've been really. We have. We've we been have really eating. We, you have. We have fritter? some over here for you to share. You know, we've actually been like taking little bites. Like we've been eating like little mites because these donuts just don't last. We on diet. Here we go. We are you guys don't get this at home. Sorry. <laughs> we got refills. <laughs> <laughs> See, we love food. Yeah, this side does. We look <laughs> very healthy, if you know what I mean. <laughs> we, well, that's our healthy. <laughs> we eat everything in sight. Yeah, the, pretty much. Isn't it the Seafood diet, right? The seafood. seafood? Mm. Yeah, you come to Puritan Way. Don't worry about your diet, okay? You want a sample? I got you. Yeah. <laughs> you want a sample? You want some of this? I got you. You can be like Costco. <laughs> yeah. You don't, break. You, don't <laughs> you don't even. By the time you leave Costco, you're full. Exactly. By the time you leave Puritan Way, you're full. See? 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 Yeah. And you also buy the Trade store. Perfect. Okay. But just come in for free time. The, fr the fritter and the blue cheese yeah, is really good. Yeah, did you guys taste it? Right? What? The, the blue cheese and the blue cheese. You forgot what we were doing. Oh, right, I did. <laughs> the fritter yeah, and the blue cheese, okay? Yeah. It's good. I heard. Very much. Well, apple and blue always go. Yeah. Goes. Any fruit with blue yeah. cheese goes well. Yeah. Okay, yes, I, do like, I do like I do like the apple fritter mm. with that. Yes. What's the yeah, blue yes. Mm -hmm. Blue and the roquefort? Well, between this particular blue okay. and the roquefort. Well, first of all, rock for mostly sheep's milk. Now, more and more, they're mixing sometimes in some cow's milk. But it's mostly sheep's milk, and obviously, it does have the penicillium in it. Yeah, yeah penicillium roca forti. Rock 40. Uh, well, this one, too, has penicillium roca forti. So this one, of course, is a goat cheese. So, I mean, not the same uh, milk. Um, so the difference between those two, I would say... The Rockford um, is a little more uh, age. Um, in texture, is a little bit more um, uh, light and and creamy. This one is more dense, but still very creamy. And of course, I mean the big difference is the 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 little yes the the, the milk. So it's the goat, the goat's milk, uh, the finish with the goat milk was this one. Um, Obviously, sheep's milk will always be yeah. a little bit richer, more creamier yeah, than a goat's fatty. milk. Yeah. Exactly, because it has a higher mm. fat content. Yeah. 
Uh, also, it doesn't have that in the back of the throat, that goatiness, farm, barnyard in it. Okay. But um, try the goat, I mean, the, the blue goat with the Pinot or the Shannon Rich. And uh, it's a very nice mellowing out. Um, Works. I mean, a classic pairing yeah. would be, you know, like a Stilton and a Port, you know, right. you know, a sweeter dessert red wine. Um, but I think a Petit Syrah works well in that sense in that, you know, you could even chill this a little bit. Yeah. I, I think the pairing might even grow if it had a little chill on it uh, with the cheese and the donut. But you're thinking about that same concept of that rich, decadent fruit, you know, to match up. This isn't quite as sweet as a Port, you know, but... There's similarities with the fruit yeah. profile. Uh, I, I'm really impressed with this blue cheese. It's actually a very young cheese. Um, obviously, uh, Max and his brother, Tristan, uh, started first light about 11 years ago. And um, if I remember correctly, we were the first ones to get the blue uh, full moon about a year ago. So it's actually a very young cheese. So they're still working on it. And what's, what's nice about it it was the first time that they worked together with Old Chatham because you always wanted to make a blue cheese and they worked together with Old Chatham on because of the, the used blue to create this uh, full moon. Okay, so um, being this young, it has a lot of flavor. It has a lot of unique characters and I truly enjoy um, having that barnyard in the back. Okay, and with the blue, it, I mean, with the, the chocolate donut, it goes well with the Pinot, but I also like uh, with the apple fritter and the Shannon Rich. And the note I forgot about the Velvet Fog. So Tom Hine is the wine producer, but Yao Ming is the winery owner. Yao Ming. Yao, Yao, Yao Ming. Ming. <laughs> so the uh, basketball player for the Houston Rockets, uh, early in his career with Clyde Drexler Olajuwon, he knew that he wanted to go in the wine business when he retired. and. So when he did retire, he took a few years off, did a lot of studying, researched, and you know, found one of the best, uh, the best in the business with Tom Hine. Uh, like no joke, like these wines are, are are pretty spectacular. Anytime you see Yao Ming wines, it's just not a celebrity on a bottle. Uh, he's part of the marketing team. He does a lot of philanthropy work, you yeah. know. And, and this is their pretty new Pinot project. And, uh, it's interesting to Price see. Price-wise, you can get all these wines here at Kieran Way. Uh, starting next week, we will we'll have some promotions going on. Thank we, you. We got a poster coming on uh, with VGK. Uh, every any six wines you buy, Republic of Pink and so forth. Everybody here will know what the wines are. Uh, any mix and match six bottles gets you a, a VGK hat. What's yep. so we're Hoping the season's going to be the playoffs, or at least they're going to be announced. Uh, the next few weeks maybe vegas will be one of the cities it's 10 cities it'll be great yes go knights the, the night the knights started our little life after the shooting maybe they're the ones that really get us going after this uh you know this we were just announced uh, pacific western region champs yeah yep so thank you you guys work very hard you deserve to be where you are on top okay so uh, keep it up Keep it up, boys. Okay. You guys. Here we go. You guys. You guys. She did something. I did something. She did something. So you know how I said we wanted some cherries? Well, we don't have cherries. But Black forest cake. Is that what it is? So you guys know those really expensive cherries that you get at one, like you get one per cocktail at a $14 per cocktail. Maraschino cherries? No, no, no. Not no. maraschino cherries. The brandy. expensive ones, the good ones. What are they called? Brandy cherries. Brandy, brandy cherries. cherries. Okay, brandy cherries. So we had uh, some brandy cherries back there. The cherries are gone. I don't know what happened to them. Not me. Mm. I <laughs> ate it. We all ate them. <laughs> but we did save the liquid just because it is so good. So I took a little bit of the one chocolate donut that I had as a refill. I don't know where it came from, but it's here. And I cut it up evenly amongst one, one little piece for all of us. And then we're going to put some blue cheese, a little bit of blue cheese. On each one of the little donuts, donut, and then we're gonna drizzle some of that cherry juice, which should be just the same as just having an actual cherry without the cherry. So it'll just be the flavor. But no, she couldn't help herself. I know I couldn't. It was so good. She, she had to prove us. So good. 
She make us a believer. All right. Take one, pat that. Oh. And then, what drizzle? Just a little bit. Whizzle. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, that was a lot. Ooh. Okay. Anyway, take one. Okay, I'll take one. I'll take this one. Take one. Take one. Take one. Anyway, take one. Oh, I'm gonna Sorry. get the smallest one. Mm. Same. Mm. <laughs> well, we'll see. Am I in it? You took the smallest one. Oh, yeah. So you, you, you don't know until you try, right? I mean, that just what sounded good at the time, but what do oh, you oh. I'm gonna no. hold the cherry juice. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. It really brought the goat out. Huh? As you make that face. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't prefer goat cheese, but it's good. It was maybe a little bit too much of the cherry juice. I do apologize. I do apologize, but imagine it just with a little less. Just imagine, use your imagination a little bit. I am not a believer. No, no. I love the aftertaste. The aftertaste is good. It's better. I like it. I can eat it. I imagine it as a cake with some chocolate frostings. Yeah, it's mm. broad in your eyes. Yeah. Oh man. Be open. I don't even want to say what I taste. We're, so. We're after milk, macaroni and cheese, no? hot dogs. And no, no. Yeah, I don't even want to say what like I taste. Like I said though, hey, sometimes it might be good. <laughs> that is what I taste. <laughs> I just mean. try it, try it and see. Mm. And if you don't like it, then hey, move on. No harm done. Yeah, right. No harm done. I taste. Turn on the play. Okay, bye I'm guys. Get over there. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. That's what I think. Wow. Yeah. Very unique, very interesting. Very rich. <laughs> rich, 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 rich. Very rich. Very rich. Yes, oh, yeah, yeah. You might know it just a little less. <laughs> that actually, that would be a very unique um, I love it. <laughs> dessert. <laughs> Try it with the peanut. Mm -hmm. You know this? I'm into that. What do you guys think? No? I really liked it. I feel like that cherry gave it like yes. a little bit of sweetness that it was lacking. I like it. Yeah, it did. It cut the barnyard out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, cut the barnyard out. <laughs> but it, I think the peanut over the piece are off. The, the cherry note. Yeah. In the end, eat the center. Yeah. What do you agree that clean cleanses a, a really rich dessert. I like it. <laughs> a, little, a little too much going on for me. <laughs> too much happening flavor wise. Yeah. Like, yeah. No. Too much. <laughs> 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 yeah. Okay. All right, so please give us all your feedback on everything, what we tasted. I mean, obviously you don't have this tasting that we're doing over here, but any questions, please feel free. Um, with any questions that you have, shoot them in and we can answer them, statements. Please go ahead. So, we never imagined to be doing a donut wine and cheese pairing. And when we first got the opportunity, I was kind of like, ah, I don't know if that even sounds good to me. And then I thought about it and I was like, why not? Like, let's try it. We have donuts every day. We're pretty bored of them, honestly. Like you can only eat so many donuts. So we needed to add something new in and I'm so glad we did. Honestly, cheese and donuts are a perfect pairing. I'm so happy. Most definitely they are. It's yeah. it's been good all the way around. Very exciting, yeah. informative, fun wines. My favorite wine to pair with it, I think, is the reds. Honestly, I think I'm just more of a red wine drinker. I feel like the whites are pretty sweet for me, and I don't love sweet wines. And the donuts are already pretty sweet, so I think the reds have been my favorite. And for me, I think my favorite was the Borealis. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. It just went with everything. It was light and easy to drink. Mm -hmm. It's delicious. It was the one that we, you know. It's like a know, summer beer. It's, it's, yeah, summer for, beer. <laughs> Borealis is a typical summer wine for me. Uh, when it's hot outside, especially right now, going from the 80s into 105, 106, it's uh, very nice and refreshing. It's crisp. And um, yeah, so I would love to, as a, as a summer wine. Yeah. 
Yeah. Absolutely. Very nice and refreshing. Yeah. So I would like to say that uh, I'm very happy with the dub class because it's fun. Very and fun. yeah, it's fun and and obviously everybody like it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I'm I'm so grateful for all of you joining us, seeing you today, picking up your packages, and uh, talking to many of you. It, it's so much pleasure for. Uh, again talking to you and, and seeing you and supporting us thank you very much for that and um, more things are coming uh, we're going to do a french tasting pretty soon and then we're also going to have a whiskey tasting beer. Uh, oh, beer. 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 sorry beer oh, and actually. beer and cheese tasting we so we're going to use whiskey yeah, tasting well yeah. it would be a beer, and whiskey. beer <laughs> yeah. and whiskey okay well oh, maybe turn maybe down the road okay but we're going to have beer uh with american cheeses right. so that's going to be a lot of fun um very interesting we're going to use american cheeses and american beers yeah well i would like to do italian too italian yeah italian cheese oh yeah no absolutely with so after maybe down the road <laughs> we have to oh, yes yeah. I, my heart is there too Thank after you. okay italian wine italian cheese yes yeah. yes after I mean, everything is done, we have the again a nice flow <laughs> of yeah. Italian soft cheese is coming in. Um, I think I'm going to bring in a nice buffalo mozzarella, maybe even a burrata. Ooh, a little little family family. Family. Yeah. Little <laughs> Yep. We're going to bring in some uh, raviola bocina, a little bit of latour, uh, mm. maybe some uh, cacciotta, um, mm. some, um, here we go, this yeah, is a good one, the rosso. Castle Rosso. Oh, yeah. okay, that would be kind of nice. So, um, I mean, yeah. it's endless. Okay. Yeah. So we always spoil here. So <laughs> we're putting up a monitor here pretty soon, so you're gonna see a running uh, lineup of what we have on cheeses. Please feel free to reach out and look at the board. And if there's something that we don't have up front, uh, let us know. We're gonna run in the back. We're gonna grab it and we're gonna cut into it. Okay, yesterday um, I was very fortunate to have uh, Gio and his wife uh, Naomi here from uh, Manzu, Pizzeria Manzu, and we did a beautiful tasting, was done, and uh, so they chose a Castique and a Buffalo for that new menu and uh, for the cheese boards, as They're well as the Castle Rosso. Thursday through Sunday. Yeah, absolutely. Well, the nice part is it's, you need to have a quality control before that. So oh, yeah. I just love it. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> but I think, yeah, once once everything is going again to bring some good Italian cheeses. Um, in Jeez. the fancy food show this uh, January, we got to taste a one-year-aged Halegio oh, that yes. was just absolutely yeah, spectacular oh. yes that was that was yeah, mind-blowing it was a little barolo yeah yeah and cortese. That, um, a cortese. yeah i think that would be kind of nice but even the barolo would be a nice pairing for us yeah. well, okay yeah. so, so by the way that cheese it's a mind-blowing uh grilled cheese Ooh. sandwiches oh yeah <laughs> yeah so just Alegio, prosciutto oh. And uh, you melt like that, that on top of <laughs> yes. a nice ciabatta or a focaccio. Mm, yum. Uh, with some fresh I got a, I got a gabi de gabi for you, 100%. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> all that's female, actually what all we female had. Owned. That's what we had yesterday when we tasted, okay? And you know what? It was funny. Gio immediately picked, oh, gabi de gabi. I knew that one, okay? And he picked it. It was awesome. La Mesma. I'll bring it over. What was the question? Oh, yeah. The question was uh, uh, dry fruits and nuts <laughs> with wine. Oops. Uh, dry fruits and nuts with wine. Yep. I mean, anything can go with wines. You just have to have the right wine, the right. Uh, it depends on the sugar level of the, the fruits and nuts. You know, is it a trail mix or is it sweet? Is it, you know, there's a lot of different variables. Uh, but fruit and nuts and wine are, yeah, yeah no brainer. Cheese. Yeah, honey. yes. These are the starts of yeah. cheese boards. Yes. So, yes, donuts. definitely. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah donuts. Are, Please. Go right there. Great parents. All right. Oh, my goodness, the board is cleaned. We ate it all. <laughs> you tore it up. At least you left the board. 
barely. It was a little bit too fibrous. It was too 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 much too much fiber for us. Yeah. We, we waste nothing. Mm -hmm. We don't need it. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you about to tear this one up next. <laughs> This is next. Ooh. <laughs> hey guys, come on. Okay, well, this side of the table is definitely um, cringing. But <laughs> I do want to start off by saying thank you guys. It's always a pleasure to have this class and share it with you, share our knowledge or our likes and dislikes of the pairings. Um, and again, if you guys come in, let us know what you thought if we didn't hear from you. And yeah. Yeah. Any suggestions you guys have for our next classes? Um, we are open to your feedback. Um, and yeah, I forgot what else I was gonna say. Andrea wants hats. <laughs> Andrea wants, oh, we were just saying hats. <laughs> we gonna, oh yeah. It's a surprise. Yeah. It's a surprise. We are gonna get more shirts done. We are gonna get more shirts. Oh, <laughs> that hurt me. <laughs> hey, Brian, come on, have another glass of wine. Uh, we're gonna get more shirts done. We're gonna get hats done. And um, sorry, I forgot to put a little package in one. I mean, a little surprise in one of the cheese packages. But I'm gonna make up for the next one. We're gonna put two packages. Okay, so uh, for the next one, you will find surprise in there in two of the packages. So whoever is the lucky person to find those, uh, we're gonna do something special. Okay. Yeah. Come All right. Down. All right. So who's gonna remember what to put two something specials in some packages? Mm -hmm. They're gonna remember. You don't forget. Remember. Don't, yeah. Don't let, let us forget. know. Because Keep letting us know because we will forget. No, we won't forget. We don't even know how to count. No. We don't know how to count. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. One plus one is three, right? <laughs> window. <laughs> one plus one is window. <laughs> no. Nothing. Never mind. <laughs> Go ahead. What y'all gonna say? Oh. Uh, a cool little thing that we're kind of planning, uh, graduation boards. I know a lot of people, a lot of We're going to do a drive-by graduation <laughs> no. cheese board. No. Hey, no. <laughs> no, come on in. We'll make a beautiful little cheese board for you guys so you guys can share with your family at home. I know it's a little bit of an awkward, though not as traditional of a graduation, but, you know, at least you can enjoy something good and enjoy it with your family and share. Okay, so if you guys want some graduation boards, call us. And then also, Father's Day is coming up. Um, we had a lot of Mother's Day boards, and we would like to also celebrate the fathers. So we'll throw in some beer, too. Oh, yeah. 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 We can do a basket, or yeah, we basket. can do um, charcuterie board. Whatever you would like. Something basket. manly. Very manly. Think, a lot of meat. I think a basket for yeah men no, would be nice. Six pack of beer. Six pack of beer. Basket. Not a bad or if you guys a lot of meat, a cooler. Yes, I like that. A cooler. We can do. If you guys have any suggestions, just call us and ask. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. Like, yeah. 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 You guys, yeah. Like, yeah. You guys think, yeah. let us know. We're we have ideas, but you know, you guys have better ones. <laughs> 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 what? What? <laughs> Hello, friends. Um, don't know how many of you have been by our shop or tried our donuts before. Um, to those of you that have, thank you for supporting us. If you haven't, please come by and check out our store. Okay. We're at 3170 East Sunset over in Henderson. Um, we are a location that really cares about the customer. We want you to come in and have a good time. Um, we care about the experience. So come down, try some donuts. National Donut Day is coming up when? Friday, June 5th. Friday, Yay! June 5th. Yes. We're going to have a whole bunch of new flavors, some great Ooh. specials. So come down, try it. It'll be a wonderful time. We are open Monday through Friday from 6 a.m. till 2 p.m. And on the weekends, we are open 7 to 2. We also have quiches, croissants, all sorts of French pastries. We serve best of coffee and fresh squeezed orange juice. So if you're more of a savory person, I suggest the turkey jalapeno quiche mm -hmm. or so the ham and cheese, and cheese croissant. croissant is yes. fire. I also love our almond croissant. So if you're not a huge donut person, we have other options for you as well. Yay. Oh, follow us on social media at Carl's Donuts LV. <laughs> Clearly, you can eat donuts if you're in shape. <laughs> donut is considered health food in Germany. So, I mean, yeah, sort of. I'll um, have a donut for breakfast and then a salad for lunch. It's all about balance. I wonder yes, if I can go on a diet, do a 
an apple fritter in the morning for breakfast. Yeah, and then you're gonna do a apple a day keeps the doctor away. Yeah, here we go. And that's a good one. Yeah. And then I'm gonna go and take the cake donut for lunch. Yeah. And then do a sensible dinner. You think that will work? Just walk from here to Carl's and you'll be fine. All right. Thank you so much, everybody. It was wonderful having you. It was great seeing you. Uh, thank you again for joining us. Thank you, thank Amber you. and Brock. Yay. And then, of course, thank you, Jason, Caroline. Thank you. thank you very much. And, of course, the Kurt Nerds. Thank you so much, everybody. Go next. Two weeks. Two weeks. In two, two weeks. weeks. Next cheese class. Um, French. French cheese and wine? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Caroline's all about it. All yeah. about it. Frenchie. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. We're going <laughs> to have some French. really nice items coming in <laughs> for that one. We're still <laughs> struggling <laughs> a bit of getting it in so quickly, but we're trying our best. We're going to actually taste some nice French wine after this. And oh, here we go. We're already pre sampling some of the French wine right <laughs> yeah. after this. Okay. Yeah, so, so we know again. what kind of cheese we need to get. Learn a little. Cheers. <laughs> Thank you so much for supporting us. Uh, we're very blessed having you all in our lives. Uh, we always say, come as a stranger, leave as a friend or family. Um, Amy, I talked to you quite well today and, and, and uh, Eileen. So here we go, Andrea. Uh, thank you so much for supporting us, uh, all of you. And we will see you soon in the shop. Yeah, thank you guys. Cheers. 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 Thank you. Thanks, Carl's Donuts. Thank you. Okay, appreciate you guys. No Ladies, Bye. Jason. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I miss you, Nicole. Sorry, I can't jump in the pool. <laughs> and don't forget, 